Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel where today we are going to be doing another recent reads because I have been flying through the books and we are just going to jump right in with the first book which is Clean Sweep by Alona Andrews, the first book in the Innkeeper series. So the Innkeeper series is an adult science fiction urban fantasy blend, which is very interesting, but we are following our main character of Dina, who is an innkeeper at an inn on Earth. And these inns serve as waypoints for aliens that are traveling through this part of the galaxy. But the big caveat is the rest of Earth does not know that aliens exist, and so Dina's like a huge part of Dina's job is to keep them secret. So when we first, uh, the very first scene of this book, there are hinky things that have been happening in Dina's neighborhood. And she knows that an alien is to blame. And now she has a rather large choice in front of her. By all rights, she should do nothing because innkeepers are supposed to remain neutral for anything that happens off of the inn's grounds. But it's, it's bad things are happening. She knows it's an alien and she knows that like most people don't even know that aliens exist, let alone know how to handle them. And she really doesn't want anything bad to happen to her neighbors. And so she has to make her choice and the story goes from there. Now, uh, just a word, some of that hinky stuff happening in the neighborhood does have to do with some pet death. So be, you have, you have been warned for that. This is um, a reread for me, and I really, really enjoyed it. So I read the most recent installment of this series and immediately was just like, okay, it's time. It's time for me to reread this series. And then I waited a little bit, but now I'm ready and I'm going to do it. Um, but this was so much fun. We get to see so many of the building blocks in this book that are going to become some amazing things later on in the series. So we first meet Dina and in this book she's a fine character and you see the threads of what is going to become more interesting things about Dina later on and we get to meet some of our main recurring characters and we get to see how they interact for the first time again. Um, and that was really interesting because I think that how they interact is so good. I really love how, um, the, the Andrews write interactions between characters. The other thing I think that they do really, really well on is world building. And this has fantastic world building. So every book in this series, we actually meet a couple different alien races and we get to learn some about, you know, what they look, their culture, like what they eat, the interest, like the interesting things about their culture. And I think that this, the, these authors do such a good job with that kind of thing. And it makes it so, so interesting. Now the plot itself was fine. It was, I can't say that it's like standard urban fantasy fare, but like you recognize bits and pieces if you're a person who has read kind of a lot of urban fantasy. How it's dealt with in this book is very different, which makes it nice and it, it, it makes it more interesting than like, you know, other urban fantasy, but it does feel a little bit familiar. Um, and then the other thing to note, especially with when we're talking about character development and plot is if you're going to pick this up, just know that this series started off as a serial on the author's blog. So basically like they would write a chapter and post a chapter every single week until the story was done. And then they gather up the chapters and do some light editing, and then they have a novel. And they've done that with every book in this series. So sometimes, not as much in this book, but sometimes, especially later in the series, you kind of 
like the structure feels a little odd or some of the character development feels a little odd until you remember that they're writing it as a serial and then it makes a lot more sense. So just know that going in that some of it is going to feel a little strange sometimes. But I really like this. I had a really good time with it and I ended up giving it four stars. And then I picked up Winter Tide by Ruthanna Emrys. Now, this is an adult historical, well, I, I've heard it described as a horror, but I don't know that I would put it as horror. It's more like fantasy, but we're in the 40s and like late 40, 40s, and we're following our main character of Aphra. And Aphra is this um, different type of human where she for now lives on the land, but as she gets older, she's going to go through a transformation and she'll become an amphibious kind of person and live the rest of her days in the ocean. Um, and then so, and her people are kind of known to have magic. So enter in our FBI character, Spectre, and he says, hey, We've got word that Russia is trying to figure out how to swap bodies with people, like, you know, have one person go into another person's body. And like, do you know anything about this? Can you help us out and do some research with us? Especially because like, it's in a language that we don't read, but you do. And so Avra has to decide whether she's going to help and how involved in this whole thing she's going to be, especially considering that 20 years ago, the government raided her hometown where almost all of the water people were living and almost all of them were de died in that like raid kind of thing. And the ones that didn't were put in concentration camps. So she's got some mixed feelings towards the government. And the story goes from there. And this was really, really interesting. So it is a little bit of a slower story and there is, um, a little bit more emphasis on the writing and the writing style. Um, but it does a really good job with being pretty atmospheric. And I felt like I was there and it was, it was also just generally kind of, and it's, it's a very interesting world because there is magic, but it doesn't work, seem to work like any other system that I've run into. And it is, like, okay, I mentioned that some people say that it's horror because it's based off of Lovecraftian mythos. So, like, the people, the gods that she, Aphra, worships are some of those Lovecraftian Cthulhu-type creatures in the deep. It's very, very interesting. And, like, I love as Aphra is trying to figure out how to navigate so many different feelings about so many different things that she doesn't trust the government, but she doesn't, she kind of wants to do this anyway to prove that like she and her, the, her remaining people, basically her brother can be useful so that she's not hunted down again, but also she doesn't really want to help them figure this out. It's a very interesting thing as she is trying to move through what is the right thing to do. Um, and I just, I just, there, there's a lot of things in this that like generally don't work as well for me, like having a slow story, having it being more atmospheric and a couple, you know, some other things that generally don't work for me, but seem to work really well for me in this book. And I just found it so different than a lot of things that I've read. And it just I really had a good time with it. So um, I'm really happy that I picked this up. I, it was kind of a long shot for me, um, but I ended up giving it four stars. And then I picked up The Faded Sky by Mary Robinette Kowal. And so this is the second book in the Lady Astronaut series, which is an adult historical science fiction, alternate reality kind of story. Basically, in the 40s, there was a meteor that struck Earth and jump-started climate change. And they knew it was happening, and so they were able to, like, you know, the, the scientists were able to convince everybody that this was going to happen. So they started pouring a ton of money into 
their space programs to see if they could like go to the moon or Mars or something and because Earth is going to become an uninhabitable very, very quickly. So the very first book, The Calculating Stars, is about trying to get to the moon. This book is trying to get to Mars. And so our main character of Elma York is one of the crew members of the very first mission to Mars. But it is close quarters, and so there are problems with her crewmates, and there are problems with the spaceship, because of course there's going to be technical problems with things like that, and they just, they they just need to get to Mars, and the story goes from there. I really, really enjoyed this story. So, like, I really like this series in general. It's another one that just feels different. And I love how sciencey this is. So it feels sciencey in the way that a natural history of dragons feels sciencey, where your main character is a scientist. They're going to be interested in the science. And so we get some of that. And it feels sciencey, but it doesn't cross over into. I think Andy Weir territory in like The Martian, which is the one Andy Weir book that I've read, where it feels very, very science heavy. Um, but it, it's really genuinely delightful. And I love that these books have looked at things that were very much social issues of the, of the times. So, you know, Elma is a, a woman astronaut. And so she deals with a lot of sexism and she, but she's also white. And so she's having to, she, in the very first book, she, she figured out, oh, I'm actually like unintentionally racist. I didn't think I was a racist person, but she's, she realizes that she grew up in a society that is inherently racist, that has systems that are inherently racist. And so even though she's not trying, she's, doing and saying things that are racist. And so she, she, between these two books, have been trying to deconstruct that. And she does mess it up, up kind of a lot in ways that are really expected. So, and I love how that is handled in these books. I also just genuinely love Elma as a character. She's got, she's so smart and she's, but she's dealing with so much, including really high levels of anxiety, like high enough that like she has to go on medication in the first book. And so like, I love that aspect of these stories as well. Um, and the plot itself was good and it was gripping. Um, and I'm so attached to these characters and like, as things were happening, not good things, I ended up crying multiple times. It was just, I was very much into it. I had, I really, really liked these books and I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. And then I picked up Your Favorite Band Cannot Save You by Scott O'Moore. And so this is an adult novella. It's like speculative fiction. And we're following a music blogger as he discovers a new band who is releasing one album track every single day. And he kind of gets on the ground floor and the band invites him to join them on tour. And it's he's quickly, quickly realizing that Things are not as they seem. And the story goes from there. Um, I'm going to be up front. I did not like this, which was really, <laughs> it was very sad because 20 to 30 pages in, I was like, yeah, this is great. This is really interesting ideas. I can't wait to see where we're going. And like a hundred pages in, I was just like, I don't know how you're going to save this. And then when I finished the book, it was like, my feelings were that I was just low level irritated and vaguely disappointed at the wasted opportunity of having such a good premise. So there you go. Um, my thing is that like, I didn't really... Okay, so like I didn't necessarily like the characters, but I don't have to like them. But I never really understood their choices either. So our main character, who I just, I can't even remember his name. So like, 
And it doesn't say it on the back, of course. Anyway, so like our main character makes some choices and I'm just like, I can understand them in the beginning, but as he continues to make the same choice, like evaluates and makes the same choice again, I just like, I don't understand why you are making that choice that you know has incredibly negative outcomes. And so I didn't understand it. And so then later in the book, when we get to the point where he's like, making other choices. I'm just like, I don't get why you're doing that either. <laughs> so I never really understood the character motivations. And then with the plot, it was a really interesting idea, but the world building didn't really hold together very well. Like we don't get a ton of explanation. It's just here it is. And then I was like, okay, I guess. And then we get to the end and we have like the big reveal. And I'm like, well, I guess we got at least one clue that this is what it is. But it honestly kind of feels like the author just threw a dart at a board for like what the big reveal would be. And then just didn't go back and do leave like hardly any clues that would make us the reader really buy into this ending. And so when we got to the ending, it was just like, sure, I guess. I mean, why not? And so like, yeah, so I didn't, I didn't necessarily like the characters. I didn't understand their motivation. I don't think that the plot held together very well. The world building was not explained terribly well. And none of it was super bad but none of it was good either. And so um, usually I'm pretty good about being like, if you can overlook these certain things and there's enough there to like, that you might enjoy this book. And I'm not sure who actually would enjoy this book because kind of everything is a little bit mediocre. So if you're really, really into the premise of this book, then maybe, but otherwise uh, you pro you may, it may not work for you. But um, I ended up giving this two and a half stars. So those are the four books that I wanted to talk about. As a preview for next time, I've already finished my next book, which was The Infinite Noise. So you'll get to hear my thoughts all about that next time. But that is all I have. So if you have any thoughts or feelings about any of the books that I mentioned in this video, please leave me a comment down below. But that is it. So if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to. And until next time, have happy reading and I will see you in my next video. Bye!